Good morning, welcome back to the Cumbrian Homestead. It's the 10th of November. We've got a dry day forecast today. This is the last apple. Uh, this is a variety uh, red stripe. Well, I don't, that's what uh, it, the cyan wood was given to me from Nazar H. Nazir. I think he's down Skelmersdale Way or something like that. And I think when he got the original tree, the nursery had mixed it up, but so he called it. Let's get that bit out of the way. You can see where I've done the graft there. I put two in, one didn't take. This one's grown very strongly. So he called it Red Stripe. And you can see that there are some nice red flushes on there. And like I said, this is uh, the last one. If it'll come off. There you go. There was three on it and one dropped off uh, a couple of days ago. I've tasted it. It's a very crisp, juicy apple. And I think as Nazar was saying, um, it's quite a large apple. It's thin-skinned. And uh, he said that it stores for a long time and probably until, uh, I think he said, mid to late April, just in a box in his garage. So I don't think there's much chance of these getting stored. But anyway, yeah. So uh, I think that was, I can't remember exactly. But it's either two or three years since I grafted it. And if we just follow it up from the graft. Going right the way up here. Uh, it's up here now. So that's got to be more than six foot of growth there. So as I said, I've got this border to cut back, but uh, the other thing I need to do this morning, anyway, I've got lots of things I want to do today. But, uh, all these figlets, you can see their legs already starting to go mouldy. So I need to pull all those off because they're not going to do anything. Uh, and then at some point I want to get all these leaves and get them into the compost, so I'll crack on and, and do that and uh, I'll bring you back. There's quite a lot there. Yeah, if it had been in a warmer climate they would have probably ripened, but anyhow we're in the UK and that's as it is, so they'll, I'll take them down and plot, put them on the compost tape. So you can see I've removed just most of them. Uh, there is very small, tiny ones that you can leave on these embryonic figs. And also um, I've got some, there's a graft here, some different varieties on that we'll see how they get on the one there. So when I come to prune late April or early May next year, I'll probably remove this branch here, which is brown turkey, so that hopefully that will grow more. I've got another one there, which did take. It's not made much growth, but it has grafted. And also I've got a, a layer, a ground layer, underneath those leaves and again there's some nice uh, suck I must say suckers but some nice shoots coming up that I can try some more layers with next year even this one I could probably do it <coughs> so I'll keep you posted on that just again be aware no you can notice that was kind of milky sap it can be a skin irritant, so if you're doing this job uh, you might want to think about perhaps wearing a pair of gloves. Fortunately my skin doesn't seem to be affected by it, but um, I know it can be quite a, a skin irritant, so just be mindful of that. Okay, I'll be back in a tick. 
So that's just some eggshell fertilizer. Every so I've got like a tin. I don't know. It's you know about that big. How big it is? It's like a compost caddy thing. So in the kitchen, so every time I have eggs, I just whack the shells in there. Then when it fills up, I process them, and then that'll go down into a bucket. Surprising really how many it takes to just do that much. And then um, I'll just quickly show you these before I get off to the plot. These are the Olga squash. You can see they've changed colour. They were sort of quite um, dark green. Now they've gone this kind of yellowy, patchy yellowy colour. So uh, probably try one of those before too long. Right, let's uh, get off down to the plot. So that's them on the compost heap. Still plenty going on the heap. Probably uh, turn that into the next bay. All like is this kind of uh, old fruited wood that I'm going to chip. So as I say, hopefully all that one will get bunged into there. This is the stuff for um, next season. I don't bother riddling it or anything, just chuck it all on the bed. Seems to do all right. All right, so that's the cover taken off. We did it out. Um, noticed. I'm going to leave this frame on. Just give them a bit of protection from the wind. <coughs> Pulled any sort of yellowy dead leaves off. I don't know whether you can make that out, probably not. But there is, can you see it now maybe? Quite a lot of white fly. So I've got some soapy water. Can you see them now coming off? I'm sure this camera picks it up, but. really bad with light fly. Let me know what your treatments are this time of year for white fly. I know people use neem oil. This is just soapy water. Anyway I'll get on and spray the rest and I'll bring you back. Anyway we'll see how that soapy water does. I can still see them flying around but uh, see how we get on with that. Just swinging around onto the carrot frame. These are sweet candle following advice from Terry King I've cut the tops off uh, so I just need to take some home today very acceptable not all like that I've, I've got quite a lot split because of the amount of rain and what have you but they are superb nothing wrong with those at all Definitely split. Yeah. Try a couple more. Must have forgot to thin. I missed one anyway. It's a shame really, but they're still perfectly usable of course, so that'll keep us going a little bit longer. You can see I've still got uh, a heap in there, that'll probably keep us going, uh, I don't know, possibly up until Christmas and then in there is a full frame of Autumn King 2, so we should be good until uh, spring really. Speaking of Autumn carrots, I did saw Three little rows in here. I can't see anything germinating just at the moment, so just have to be patient, wait and see. The ones that I had in the boxes here, um, I decided to just sow a few more. See, kind of, there is some coming up. So the ones that we'll just see how they go on, I guess. There was something lurking in there that was eating them, but anyway, 
and this is the uh, these are the uh, Olga so I, you can see the difference if you rewind a little bit and have a look at the ones in my workshop kind of more this colour so I'll try and get these home today in here I'm saving some parsley seed and there I've just got some uh, carnations just overwintering them here's my fig cutting I'm just overwintering that and then here um, there's three there's two bags of compost and a bag of topsoil which I got given by somebody who's also given me an 8x6 greenhouse which is what we're in now so that's what I've also been busy with uh, I've took all the glass out I've got the door off loosened the frame and what we're hoping to do this coming weekend is four of us are just going to pick the frame up and put it on the back of a flatbed uh, take it down to the micro orchard and so we don't have to dismantle it so I think what I'm going to do is make a, a wooden base, screw it in and it just keeps the frame from uh, twisting and from blowing around in uh, the winter gales ok so we're over on the micro orchard most of the glass and there's the window light the doors there and the 2x2s, the 2x18s so I think there's only about four panes I need to replace which is really good seeing as it's not been used for over four years it's just sat there unfortunately they only passed away um, so like I say yeah it was a cracking opportunity really uh, for which I'm very grateful so the other thing I just need to do while I'm here I've got some string with me I just need to tie in the new canes this is the thornless blackberry and probably prune out the old stuff so again you can see there's the old wood there the colour of it this is the new wood so I'll get on and do that well I got them tied in but I forgot to bring my secateurs so I'll have to come back and uh, take the dead wood out but they should be nice and snug now and secure against as I say the gales that we seem to get all too frequently I'm planning to dig up a load of rhubarb on the plot and bring it over here put another row in down there but I need to dig all that dandelion and grass I need to clean it all up first and then same probably move that edging board over dig a trench put manure in and get the crowns in but that'll give me a nice big double row rhubarb and just a quick look at the comfrey and then I'm headed back over to the plot just to measure up see if I've got any timber available for that base for that greenhouse but that's done really well that's done really well so see I'm not going to cut that I'm just going to leave it to rot down but right the way along where I went and that's all come good so I say the plan for next year is to take some more divisions and carry it on down underneath where that carpet is maybe down to that bush there so as I say by degrees the whole length of the boundary will become a, a huge bed of comfrey which I don't think you can have too much comfrey really right I'm off over to the back over to the plot so I've had a root around and I've found uh, those two long bits are just an inch and a half short of eight foot and I can make up the uh, gable ends six foot uh, with these the same diameter inch and a half so I should be able to screw something together or you know like I said just sit the frame on that and it'll keep it uh, from warping and then I can anchor that into the ground and screw through into that so it should make everything nice and secure so that's about it for this one folks um, I just went through my cabbages by the way and sprayed them with actually the spring cabbage weren't so bad um, it was the savoys that uh, again very bad with white fly but I've sprayed them with the soapy water so we'll see how uh, see how we go on so like I said thanks as always for watching my videos I do appreciate your support don't forget to give me a thumbs up and 
comment and hit the subscribe button and uh, I will catch you in the next one. Bye for now.